because tonight's report is all about a finding which, uh, if we can finally establish it, will be rather shocking to the establishment. There's me on the day of discovery. It was wet, it was rainy, somewhere in Australia. And I deliberately use it that way because I have no intention of telling you where in Australia it was. We don't want people ruining this site. And it just looked to me like an Irish copper's baton. You know, something you beat someone over the head with? Um, what did we do with it? Well, we have a builder friend who's actually gone home for the night because he wants to be fit to drive for tomorrow. But I took it home to uh, our office and I said, please make me a copy. Now, the copy had to be precise. And that is, it had to be the same dimensions, same width, same height, same cross-section, and we were looking for something that was made out of the same sort of heavy material. This was incredibly heavy. If you want to pick up this later on, it's unbelievably how dense and heavy some versions of wood actually are. All right? Is it man-made? How would you recognise? Earlier this year from Western Australia, we had some stone tools donated, and yes, my first question was, do we have legitimate authority to accept these tools? Have we certified a traditional ownership, etc.? All covered, all dealt with by the mine, the traditional owners, etc. Uh, so yes, wonderfully donated. How would you recognise that's man-made? I mean, I'll help you a bit. There's the first stone tool I ever found. Mad Dog Creek. Exhausted driver. Middle of the outback. Hello and behold, there's something in the creek. Now, that's a rhetorical question because the answer is very simple. You could bang a rock around in a creek for a gazillion years and all that will happen is it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. When you have a look at that stone tool or any stone tool like this one here or this one here, do you see the nice polished end? That just doesn't happen naturally in all of your experience or even a flake tool where you have a sharp edge all the way around, and you can actually say, wow, that looks like it's been made to fit in my hand. So it's easy to recognise a stone tool. It's actually easy to recognise a wooden tool. Do you realise tourists are willing to pay for things like this? Do you know why they're willing to pay for something? Because they know that this didn't happen by itself. Somebody who existed before it, somebody who's not a part of it, actually made the wood do what wood wouldn't. Isn't that true? And they're willing to give worthship to the creator, and that means they pay for it, the value. It's easy to recognise something that's been created or intelligently designed, whether it's made of stone or whether it's made of wood. If you want to follow up any further, that paper came out earlier, or sorry, last year now. It's all about 3.3 million year old stone tools. Now, I wouldn't... Uh, actually go hunting it down if I were you. Um, it just looks like a page full of rocks that have edges on them that couldn't have happened by themselves. Okay, so what did we do now? We have been working in schools for ages, haven't we, Diane? Designing courses and that for use in biology classes because, as Andy McIntosh will tell you, design is supposed to be something that's absolutely unscientific. And yet that whole paper on the evidence of stone tools uh, being 3.3 million years old, had to deal first of all with how do you recognise something has been carved by somebody, something has been beat by somebody who was smarter than the object. And the same turns out to be true for an object like this. Oh, that's what we found in the location. Here's the copy we made. Now, I'll be honest with you, Fred would be very insulted if you said that happened by accident because he measured our original object, weighed the original object, scoured the literature to find the right sort of timber that would match the density. Then he spent quite a while getting it right, only to be told by me, Fred, that's too thin, uh, and do it again. Oh, by the way, the second time, we end up with something like this. Now, none of you believe that happened by itself, because it's got all the evidence of information or intelligence being put into it, and so is that. There's the vertical picture of the object we dug out of the section. There's Fred's vertical section. There's the end section of the object we dug up. There's the copy. Um, by the way, that didn't happen by accident. There's the thin end. There's Fred's thin end. There it is from the top. There it is from the bottom. Oh, it's got a distinct geometry. 
And uh, photographing it in selected light, you can even see that it's been shaped. Well, Fred said to me, John, do you realize that's how we preserve maximum strength in a wooden structure? We don't go across the grain, we actually follow the grain so it gets the maximum strength for the minimum weight in the object. He was impressed. But did it come from the layers that we found it in and on? You see, if that's the case, it could be anywhere between 2 and 40 million years ago. And if that's the case, somebody was here who made it if you use the evolutionist time scale. Of course, it could mean that, therefore, the dating techniques for these strata are wrong. It could, of course, have also political implications that these people were here before the Aborigines. Oh, we can't say that. Yeah, I'm sorry, but truth is rarely politically correct. It's just right. Um, geological history could even be wrong. Giving you a close-up of the strata, you'll see there's lots of logs here, there's lots of rocks here, there's lots of coalified material. Um, yep, you're right, very few people would even have a clue where that was. There's volcanic rocks there, um, there's my hammer there. I usually leave these all over the planet, so if you find some of them, they're usually mine, please bring them back. Um, okay, that's near the bottom of the strata containing the tool-like object, there's the top. You will see the brown coaly formation and then immediately on top of it is a sandy formation. No evidence of slow progression from one to the other, almost like somebody cut the surface of one top and dumped stuff on it. Now, did it actually come from this black coaly type layer? Uh, there's one end. Do you notice when we cleaned off all the sand it had some things embedded in it? These are bits of quartz. So let's go to the wood that's also there, some of which is sitting on the surface, some of which is in the rock. You will notice it looks jet black. You get up closer, you will see there's bits of quartz associated with it because this stuff is in a sort of volcanic sandstone. It goes in it, it goes under, it goes around it. You will also notice here, see these nice big quartzy boulder bits, quartzy pebbles, bits cemented into the rock as well. So it was yours truly, Job, and a few other people who are associated with the ministry to go out, double check, double check again, double check again, collect some specimens for testing. Hmm. Uh, you do recognise a tree, don't you? And this tree is definitely in the strata, and the strata's got white quartzy bits in it, and these ones here are washing around in the current uh, tide every time it moves over. There's even some branches that are broken left there. And this specimen became my prime object because we actually took that whole section off and took it home and had a good look at it, cleaned it up, broke it open inside to see what was there. Do you notice what looks like a white bit of quartz stuck to the outside? You uh, turn it round a bit and the white quartz is actually impregnated into the wood. And you get a bit closer and you will see this tree, which is now brown further in, is actually loaded with these pressed-in bits of quartz, as is this. You see, when we look at the tree, no geologist I know of argues that that tree fell in there after all these rocks formed and the sand simply sort of got into the cracks. In the same way, this tool here has... Ha yeah, I, I called it a tool because I can't think of anything else to call it. It beats that paper on 3.3 million-year-old fossil tools, doesn't it, Diane? They just look crummy. They look even worse than my Mad Dog Creek tool. Yep. Actually, have you ever tried to make a stone tool? It's not as easy as it seems. It takes a fair degree of skill even to do that. If you want to try and make one of these, hang around and polish it on the rocks and see how patient as well as skillful you actually have to be. Okay, so I'm satisfied to the point of the time that these are actually the same as the quartzes in the other logs that are buried there. What was it for? Well, there's the original. There it is under normal light. The closest we can get in Australian implements, you know, the ones from the Aborigines who... By the way, how long do the Europeans say Aborigines have been here now? 40,000. Actually, in some textbooks, it's up to 70,000 years. And as I said the other night, that is not an Aboriginal figure. 
If you've ever worked with Aboriginal cultures, you know time is not at the top of their priority, neither is recording history in any way that you recognise and a chronological series of events uh, a feature of their history or their culture. But they do record messages and they do use message sticks. But most of the message sticks I've come across certainly are shaped like batons and things like that, or like those little throwing sticks with points at both ends, but they are rarely heavy and they rarely look like a policeman's baton at all. Hmm. Club? Yep. I am happy to think that that's a club. I mean, there's Fred. There he is in full glory. And by the way, the same evidence that proves that bit of wood was intelligently designed is actually applicable to human beings. That wood, uh, that, that object that Fred has made, shows all the evidence of somebody who existed before it, somebody who's not a part of it, and somebody who's smarter than it. And so does every human cell. It does not happen by accident. The closest we can get to making an Aboriginal is this one here. All right? A throwing stick. But um, no, we're not going to let you throw this. Throwing sticks are very good, by the way. They're found in many ancient cultures in Egypt, in North America, and they're designed so if you throw them, that lady up the other end won't catch it. She'll get it in the head. Right? It's, they're designed to cause damage, throwing sticks. Um, that would make a very ineffective throwing stick. These needed to be weighted at one end or the other, but that one's far more a club. Okay, let me tell you where we're going with this. There's some further research we obviously need to do, but there's some other bits that we've picked up as we've scoured the region. But let me give you a summary. A, I'm satisfied it's actually from the original strata. B, that makes all the geology of this area with all its millions of years of dates up for grabs. C, it's got horrendous political implications. Hmm. Whether it's talking about Captain Cook, early Australians, Aboriginal, uh, you do realise the Aborigines came from India. So don't be surprised, they have boomerangs, they have dingoes over there. Interesting, all the implications. How would you recognise this was originally tooled? Well, can you spot some polishing abrasions on this portion of a tool? Because I can. I'll tell you what, sand didn't do that over a piece of woody root. This has been someone's done. I mean, you get up close with this, and Fred's done a wonderful job, but you can actually spot where this has been abraded over and over again, get the surface just right. So look, creation research has called that because we certainly do believe in what the Bible says, testing all things and only keeping the things that are true. If you want to help any so-called indigenous group, then you have to get them to one place. You ain't actually indigenous. I mean, you may have lived here before the Europeans, but originally you came from a place called Babel. And before that, we were all on the same boat. Isn't that true? And before that, our ancestor Adam, no matter what colour we are, was in the Garden of Eden and he blew it. And you and I, whether we're black, white uh, or whatever colour we are, have a problem called sin. Obviously, we'd like to do some carbon-14 testing. It's 700 bucks a time. Uh, you want to help with that? That's wonderfully appreciated. No, not to prove how old it is, but to prove the wood in the trees and the wood in the tool have the same carbon-14. So they actually come from the same place. Microscopic tests, chemical tests, um, and actually a museum display, because I'll be honest with you, we've now been given heaps of these sort of things. Or I've collected them quite a place. You know, I was in one church, I couldn't believe it, in the USA, and they'd imported some stones to build a beautiful stone garden because we were on the edge of the really dry zone. And as I'm walking through these stones, guess what I noticed? Not only fossils, but stone tools. And they were just in the garden. Now they're in my collection. You thought I was going to say garden, didn't you? No, that's what the museum project is all about. And the world needs to see the evidence that God's word is true from the beginning. And it's right, right, all, all the way true, right to the very end. And if you want to help native Australians, native Indians, visiting Somalis or whatever, you have to get them back to man-made in God's image. We are tool makers because we are created in God's image and the first tools were actually designed in Genesis chapter 4. Not of wood, but of metal and alloys. We started off incredibly well designed and we are great designers. Yep, there's some of the implications. The brown coal in Victoria is not 40 million years old. The dating methods are way out of the creek. 
I mean, they're just not even in the right ballpark. And the first inhabitants, well, John and I have tossed this around a bit because he's interested in history. And we've been trying to track down what cultures have tools like this. Was it a group that was here before the current original indigenous Australians? Wow, political, you know, explosive, pretty powder keg. Well, you want to keep up? I'd encourage you, if you're not on our mailing list, click search, insert words like tool, technology, stone age, metal age, put yourself on our mailing list, 